Welcome to another episode of Timeless Wealth. Well, today we've got an exciting episode lined up. I'd like to thank our guest today, Matt Persram, with your commercial manager in the creative industries segment here at National Bank. And we thought, Welcome, Matt. yeah, part of part of what we do here is we try to demystify what goes on in the big banks and all these different departments. And yeah. you're in a very interesting segment in creative industries. So we want to pick your brain of what that means and I know we've got lots of questions lined up. So yeah. coming up next. Welcome back. So here we are with Matt Persram, again, a commercial account manager here in the creative industry segment. So Matt, my first question is, what include is included in creative industries? I, I initially think movies, but I'm sure it's probably more expansive than that. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you said it earlier in the intro, it's a really unique part of the bank. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is it's it's truly anything creative. So, you know, film and TV is kind of the main segment of our business. Right. But we consider performing arts, you know, digital media, visual arts. We're getting into game development now. Game so, development. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. One of the one of the fastest growing industries for the last 20 years is the game in, yeah. uh, in the creative industry side. So, yeah. you know, for us, it's really kind of the core ethos is really supporting creative Canadian content. So anything that would fall under that umbrella, we love to, you know, yeah. chat mm -hmm. with people about. So, yeah. Painters well, maybe as well? Like, would you would you guys ever, like, work with painters? Yeah, I Stuff mean. Stuff like that? Like, things like fine setting, arts? Yeah, fine arts, yes. Things like setting up uh, an art gallery, if there's real estate involved, we want mm -hmm. to figure out how to help. Um, what's, you know, important is that everything is, every project is unique. So it's really important for us to kind of understand you know, what the cre creative endeavor is and yeah. how we can come in and, and really help them out. So, yeah. yeah well, when you talk about too, like I know in Canada, when it comes to Canadian content, there's a lot of grants and money available for these businesses to help them. How, mm -hmm. What, in your role, where do you get involved to help with that? Yeah, so really kind of the bread and butter of what we do, if we just look at film and TV, is really tax credit finance. So you'll have a producer with mm -hmm. a project that they're working on. So there'll be a, a writer and there'll be actors and there'll be kind of a crew and they're essentially greenlit. So what that means is they have all of their funding sources kind of put together, which includes um, grants from places like Ontario Creates, which mm -hmm. is the provincial uh, body and, um, you know, Canadian Media Fund and, and even simply just organizations like Telefilm or other kind of... Um, distributors that would help get the project going so they'll essentially have all these sources of funding and what we find is there's often a funding gap between mm. the expenses that are required for the production right and once when some of these inflows are coming in right right so, yeah the timing's probably not perfect right so how do you it never, is, yeah. <laughs> it never is yeah yeah and i mean the the easiest example is really and we're all familiar with it is tax uh refunds right right mm. um we get those you know we have to wait for a full tax year and then we collect from the government whatever refund we're owed. And it's the same with a, with a movie. So they'll apply for tax credits uh, based on the production that happened in Canada. Mm -hmm. The government requires that movie to be done, right. delivered, in, is, the, is the term that we used. Um, and then essentially they apply for the credit and get it. So that can take sometimes a year mm -hmm. after the project's already done. Right. delivered before they get that money right so that's where we come in and say great you've got everything lined up you know how many uh you know the tax credits you're going to receive we'll give you 90 percent of that today right and you can use that for your production and 90 percent. that's a large amount to put up front yeah yeah well it's essentially government money mm -hmm. and we have a few um different documents that kind of provide us comfort including accountants opinions and and different certificates mm -hmm. so we can rely pretty comfortably that that money is going to come in mm -hmm. and it allows the producer to finish the project and once it's done and the government issues the refund we essentially collect that on their behalf and, mm -hmm. and right. pay out the loan so it's a great way to just get projects moving mm -hmm. um, and also help the government in a way support yeah. these businesses yeah. So Matt, I have um, uh, your chat there. I have a few questions. Um, one, basically, 
uh, folds on to the other. The first question, have you you've been doing this for a while, I assume, or or, or, or not that long? Or So I've been in the commercial corporate space yeah. for about 10 years. Okay. Uh, and I recently entered the creative the industry. The creative industry space. Okay. Um, I would certainly say that I've been an avid film and, and TV guy for a long time. Yeah. So you love movies. You know that space. You love yeah. TV shows. <laughs> love movies, but also really appreciate the process and the production aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So coming, taking that banking experience and really providing that expertise to yep. to producers who, mm-hmm. you know, they're busy making a film. Right. Um, so to have that financial expertise is really important to them. So gotcha. yeah, leverage that kind of commercial background yeah, into y- film. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Especially knowing the background of what their issues are is hugely, you know, if you're coming in to the bank and asking for some money and some financing, you hope the person person you're talking to understands your business yeah, yeah. And, and all the issues you're going to face. And so having that experience is, is huge. Yeah, right. And that's something I think, uh, you know, in corporate banking, we we tend to uh, forget is just really how well versed our, our clients mm-hmm. are in finance and it makes transactions really easy. Mm-hmm. Creative industries, um, these are incredibly talented people and finance is kind of last in their list of mm-hmm. other things to worry about. So Certainly, it, it's a much more collaborative environment in mm-hmm. the creative industries and really becoming a partner right, right. In, in whatever t- film or TV that they're yeah. making. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. you mentioned previously like um, a, a Canadian Canadian production, obviously, and Canadian culture and whatnot. What is the, um, in, your, in, your, in your perspective, can you speak about on the importance of that? Because right, basically what I want to get to is what is the aim, you know, through all these uh, tax incentives and these refunds and what is the legislation? What is the aim of the legislation? For example, is it is Canada trying to take on Hollywood, or you know, are we? Is it preservation of Canadian culture? Um, just just wondering. And the reason I'm asking is because um, I, I've always been fascinated, or a little bit fascinated, I'd say, by um, by the amount of influence Hollywood has had mm-hmm. worldwide, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and even if you start going into even uh, other production uh, cities like Bollywood or whatnot, or even I think. Um, uh, I think I was speak. I saw one time on TikTok, Nollywood. You can see classic American uh, entertainment mm-hmm. in those kinds of movies, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Th- that's my question. Like, what is the aim and the importance of 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 this type of legislation or or the work that you do uh, helping these producers and stuff? Yeah, I mean that's a really uh, amazing question, and I love it because it really does bring up what is Canadian culture mm-hmm. yeah. and and essentially, yeah, what is the government trying to do support to support that industry? <clears throat> and ultimately um, art in all of its forms is, is truly an expression of, of the artist. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And there's, there's definitely going to be influence from other countries like Hollywood coming up to Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, you know, there's, there's a Canadian experience that is uc- uniquely Canadian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're I agree. Yeah. one of the largest countries in the world, uh, incredibly diverse landscape, demographic, um, amazing immigrant culture. Mm-hmm. So there's all of these views that come to Canada that we want to express as, as a part of our identity. Right. And, you know, quite simply, it's it, when you think about a profit incentive, you know, it's, it's it's a bit trickier for you know Canadian artists to mm-hmm. really kind of enter that American ecosystem. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think what the government is trying to do through through its own tax credits, but also like uh, the the CMF and, and Telefilm, is really to give a voice to Canadians, and and we at the bank are are a part of that process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is really more pragmatic, and it's just simply labor. There's because of our amazing scale of geography i mean there's so many different places to film right and it's important to support you know camera guys and, and crew workers and and all yeah. of the different pieces that come together um to build a production yeah and so the government says great if you have canadian labor we're going to you know subsidize that right mm-hmm. right so it really encourages americans to come up here or or uh, we do a lot of co-productions as well with with europe um to come over here and yeah shoot in our beautiful country and and we'll we'll create incentives to uh, help you do that mm-hmm. so, yeah. have you seen in into in the last little bit given the the canadian dollar have you seen a change in the landscape currently yeah so i mean there's certainly um 
a few hotspots in Canada. Vancouver mm-hmm. is is one of the biggest. Mm-hmm. Right. The X Files really drove the industry. Yeah. There. yeah. When, I, when, I, when I lived there, I used to see them produce like on Robson Street, on Davie Street. Uh, right, that was one of my them. mom's favorite shows, The X Files. Oh, really? <laughs> She's so into it. Yeah. yeah it's classic. Yeah, classic. You could see yeah. them always uh, uh, filming down there yeah. in, in Vancouver. Yeah. Especially New Westminster as well. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah so there's certainly a currency advantage. Um, filming in Canada in a place like Vancouver, but also just logistically, it's right, it's it's the same time zone as LA. Right. Um, it's just across the border. So it's very easy for people to come up uh, and and do business and right. do production in, in Vancouver. Uh, but we're also seeing an expansion with, uh, we talked a little bit about The Last of Us, which is oh, I love one HBO's, of the best shows ever. Made. Yeah, yeah. basically HBO's biggest show mm-hmm. uh, right now. And certainly I think over time, It'll it'll likely rival Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, it was shot in Alberta. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty neat. You know, that, and that's you have to watch it, Amy. Yeah, it is I know. So good. You watched I, it, right? Man? Yeah, it's great. Oh, it's, 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 it's an fantastic. awesome show. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, in Alberta is maybe one of the lesser known areas to shoot. So I think the Revenant yeah. was also a shot in Alberta, right? That's right. With yeah. um, uh, with DiCaprio. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Lord DiCaprio. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's definitely a lot more activity up north, and mm-hmm. as they kind of expand from Vancouver out east and mm-hmm. obviously toronto is a big hub mm-hmm. right kind of the comparisons to new york yeah um yeah they're they're seeing the value through both the currency but also the 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 landscape and the talent that we have not just on the acting side but also behind the behind scenes the scenes yeah but let me ask you this like i i do i do remember in um doing my master's w- w- i had this comm course and this is when i learned this one thing that Although we have a lot of talent, because of the U.S., the exposure that you get for producers and actors in the U.S. is obviously much higher. And you're, if you act or produce in the U.S., you're getting paid in U.S. dollars. A lot of our great talent, just like sports, just like hockey and and um, and even even our baseball players, they go down in the U.S. because they can make way more money. Mm-hmm. And it is the same thing in acting or in, in film production or TV production, TV show production, right? Like they just they just rather go to the U.S. You're getting paid in. Uh, First of all, the weather, if you, if they're in there, they're in, probably in L.A., right? So the weather is probably a little bit better than coming from uh, even from Vancouver or Calgary or Toronto. So they get better weather and they the pay is better, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, although we have great talent, everybody just wants to go to the U.S. Right, right. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I is think... Is that how, like, what's the government doing about that or... Or, or, or whatnot like yeah i think historically that's definitely true and, and i think in film in some of the kind of the subsections of film production you're seeing that a lot more especially with some of the virtual uh sound stages that they're building and mm-hmm. some of the the it that goes behind it uh, the special effects artists a lot of them are getting you know after they'll do a big project in canada essentially get getting poached to, to go to to go to la right yeah so that does happen uh you know i, I think we all need to um, support every upcoming generation of talent. Right. And I think there's always going to be a little bit of turnover. Uh, and I think part of what the government support is, is to ch- simply just continue the work here. If they do grow and become bigger and they go to the States, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's, you know, it's essentially a fact of life. Mm-hmm. Really. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't stop from new talent from continuing to grow. Um, and, you know, at, at a higher level, Canada is an amazing country. We have universal health care. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we We're happy to be in Canada. Yeah. yeah. But to your point, supporting the content that maybe doesn't get as, as publicized as the the Americans. And I think that's in the news lately is that, what is it, Bill C-11? Mm-hmm. Is that, that's kind of, can you, do you have a little bit of background of what that is right now that they're talking about? Yeah, so the Facebook Google thing, right? Yeah. I think it was. One of it's about two? content yeah. on social yeah. media and how like how do we have more Canadian content yeah. on that? Because yeah. as much as people are saying we don't want to be censored, mm-hmm. well, we kind of are because all the stuff we're getting is just US based predominantly, that's, right? That's so cool. how do we get some more Canadian content? By being Team Ryan Reynolds. That's yeah. Like. yeah, Team Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But how do we and I actually, you know, I made a comment earlier. I'm like, well, when I go on Google News, I like clicking the Canada button so yeah. that it, you know, here's what's going on in my world. Yeah. Um, so seeing that on social media unfold, I actually think that would be great to see more like what are some of the Canadian movies and and recognizing the locations of these places and getting behind them and, you know, fostering that to bigger growth versus yeah. just, yeah, they go to the U.S. But how do we promote mm-hmm. that more? So. 
Yeah, it's uh, Canada's actually one of the first countries in the world who's put together this legislation to essentially capture streaming services, digital media mm -hmm. as a part of kind of the government's cultural um, regulation, if you would say, to ensure mm -hmm. that Canadian content does get exposure. Uh, you know, a great parallel is really what happened in the 70s with mm -hmm. music. Right. With, uh, with them essentially saying, great, you're having a radio station, you have to play 20% Canadian artists. Right. And it was, it, some call it a gold rush for Canadian music because mm -hmm. what happened was all of these um, producers and, and companies in Canada just scrambled to find anybody with a guitar right. who could make a song and in, they could put it on the radio. Canada. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put it on the radio and meet those uh, requirements. Hmm. And you saw the birth of a lot of incredible artists who wouldn't have had the opportunity right. to develop in oh, Canada. Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. So that is essentially what Canada is looking to do. And, and pardon me, they've already done it with TV for decades. Right. Um, but that's what they're now trying to capture the Netflix and the, and the you know, the Disney pluses into that equation and right. say, great, you can offer your service in Canada. You have to have Canadian content. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be great for producers who are already here developing things mm -hmm. but it's also going to be an opportunity to find new talent and, and and create new content here so it's it's really exciting so yeah. for your critics who would say for example no you know what i think a company should be completely 100 percent uncensored like what would you say to those uh to those individuals right like where the government should just add no legislation no government should actually step in uh to you know to streaming services and tell them what they they should or shouldn't publish um, or uh, unless obviously it goes against um, local laws or, you know, for example, production companies, like what, what, what would you reply to them? Well, ultimately, when we think about Canadian media, um, it, it's not something that we can, that we necessarily seek out on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I think even with Netflix now, how many of us just turn on Netflix and see what's popping up on there? We're not right. always that self-directed in yeah. what we consume. Yeah. And really what this is saying is um, they just want to ensure that there's Canadian options on there that we can kind of stumble into. Right. Um, and, you know, when we think about preserving culture, we are really close to America. We mm -hmm. do want to be distinct. Mm -hmm. And there are Canadian stories that just mm -hmm. may not have the traction that they would right. in, in America. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think it's really important to to allow those voices to have a platform. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and ultimately, the American content is still going to be there. Nothing's going away. Exactly. Uh, we're just getting a little bit more of that Canadian flavor. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, like, we have regions in Canada. Like, Quebec is one of them, right? They, they have a lot of legislation where, you know, to preserve the Quebec French culture, the Canadian French culture. So Canada has a great culture, right? Like, when we, really, we compare, really do. I yeah, don't yeah. know, I'm pretty happy in Canada versus in the U.S., so yes. I, I would like to get behind, you know, supporting right. our we, we need Canadian more, talent. We need more a and please and sorries in yes in, in, yeah, in, that's in, right. in, in the cases. whole world yes <laughs> a and please and sorry it's good go. for that's the whole world for. and yeah. the maple syrup exactly oh, it's maple syrup put it in it like every single every single Everything. movie every single tv show there you go <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. no i think that would be fabulous so well and it's great again that you have the experience and the knowledge and the know-how of yeah. all of these moving parts mm -hmm. in that space um and so you've been a great resource for for us and our clients and i and i can i thank you for coming on today and, and sharing you, your great. thoughts yeah, yeah. yeah and i really appreciate the work you guys are doing to kind of help bring in you know our you know our potential clients into the mix and learning a little bit more about the different things the bank does um and certainly just to kind of top it off i you know a big part of why i really enjoy national bank is that sense of let's support our, our, our communities. Let's mm -hmm. support these different industries yeah. that other banks are overlooking. Yeah. And I think in, in that in itself is a part of Canadian heritage too. Yeah. So that's, uh, it's really exciting to be part of that. And thank you guys. For no, you, thanks you again, have, Matt. You couldn't have ended any better. I like that. That was that. I like lovely. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I planned that out. I had it written down. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Till next time.